Okay, so at this point, we know about refraction, and refraction has some pretty cool uses, the main one being lenses. So there's two types of lenses. There's a converging lens, and there's a diverging lens. A converging lens causes parallel rays of light to converge to a single point. A diverging lens causes parallel rays of light to diverge away from each other. All right, how's that working? So here's a converging lens, here's a diverging lens. And sometimes you'll see a converging lens called a convex lens and a diverging lens called a concave lens. And the only way I remember this is because concave, cave, right? It caves in, right? But these names aren't helpful. It's better to remember converging, diverging, right? In those shapes. So let's look at a converging lens. Here's the top of a converging lens, right? And so imagine I have a light ray coming in and hitting right there. So if you remember from Snell's law, there's my normal line, right? And this ray wants to go straight, but because it's going from a low index to a high index, it's going to bend towards the normal. So it does this. And then here, right, it's going to cross out. So there's going to be another normal line like this. And because it's going from high index to low index, it's going to bend away. So here's where it would go, and it's going to bend away from that. So it points down, right? So low to high bends towards the normal. And then again, it bends away from the normal. And both of those cause it to bend down. And so if you imagine flipping this thing, every ray would end up going towards a point in the middle. Okay, so diverging. How about that? So diverging kind of looks like this. And I can't draw, but just bear with me. So here's a ray coming in. Here's my normal line. Low index to high index bends towards the normal. So towards the normal, it wants to go this way, but it bends up. So again, here's my normal. High index to low index wants to bend away from the normal. So it wants to go this way, but it's gonna bend away. And so you see, it pushes it away, right? And so imagine flipping this to the other side and all these rays that come through a diverging lens are gonna diverge away from a point. Okay, so let's practice making a ray diagram so that we can look at what's gonna happen when I put an object in front of a lens at different distances and different types of lenses. So. The first thing for a ray diagram is you draw what's called the principal axis, right? It's just a line that represents like zero. And then you're gonna draw your lens, right? So I'm gonna draw a vertex right here. That represents where the lens is, but I'm gonna draw the lens in here just so I can see a picture of what the type of lens is, right? So I don't draw the rays interacting at this. This is just a picture for me to tell. The light is actually gonna interact with the lenses that, at that vertex that I drew right there. So every lens has a focal point and the focal point is what's gonna determine how the lens behaves when you put it in front of things. Any ray of light that comes in parallel to the lens will cross out through the focal point. So by Snell's law, the converse should be true, right? Any ray that comes through the focal point should go out through another lens parallel. So if there's my focal length and I move this over and I put another lens, at the focal point, then you can see these rays pass through the focal point so they come out parallel. A lens has two focal points, right? So I'm just gonna draw a random one right here, right? And because these focal points are the same on both sides, I'm gonna try to draw it exactly the same distance on the other side. So there's my two focal points. And I'm gonna make an object over here as an arrow. And the reason we use an arrow is because if this thing flips, it'll be pointing the other way and I can tell that the image is inverted, right? If I just use like a box or something, it doesn't, I can't tell if it flipped up or down. Okay, so to make a ray diagram, we're gonna draw three principal rays. The first ray is gonna go parallel and then through the focal point like you saw in that video. So here's the first ray. Ray number one goes parallel to the axis through the focal point. Okay, ray two is the opposite of that. So ray two will go through the focal point and out parallel. And then ray three is straight through the center. So any ray for a lens, any lens for that matter, if you draw a ray from the tip of your object straight through the middle, right, right there, it will come out unchanged. So there's my three rays, right? And you can see these rays meet over here, right? So where those rays meet, I'm gonna draw the tip of my arrow. So see how it's below the axis if you follow the base of the arrow over the base of the arrow goes to the center of the lens and at the center of the lens it's hitting perpendicular right so it's not going to bend so the base of my arrow is still going to be on the line but the tip of my arrow is going to be at that point so if you draw the tip then you can connect the line and there is your image so this is called the object and what you draw over here is called the image and i can tell that my image is flipped so in this case i know this is a real image 
these rays actually cross, right? They come over here, they go through the lens, and they actually physically cross. Plus, the easy way to tell if an image is real is if it's inverted. This image is inverted, so it's a real image. Okay, so what if I can't draw one of these rays, right? So you may be presented a ray diagram like this. So make this ray diagram. Well, let's follow our steps. So I could do my first ray, parallel focal point, right? So it's going to go parallel and then through the focal point. So I probably need to draw my axis, but I can look at my second ray, focal point parallel. That's where I run into issues. I can't go through the focal point because it's behind it, right? There's no point in sending a ray back there. That's stupid because you're trying to meet your image over here. So what you can do is just skip that one and go to the third ray. So my third ray I can always get because it goes straight through the middle, right? So my third ray kind of looks like that. I only need two rays to see where they can cross to get my image, right? So look at these two rays. They're not parallel, so they must cross somewhere. See if you can figure out where they're going to cross. So if you look at it, they're diverging over here. So that means at some point they must cross, right? So if your eye is over here, if you follow these rays back, this ray looks like it came from here. This ray looks like it came from here. And if you follow these back far enough, there's a point right there where they intersect. And that's going to be where your image shows up. So again, where the rays meet, I draw the tip of my arrow, right? And then the base is always on the bottom. So there's my image, right? And so this is a virtual image. So in this case, if you're looking at these rays, they don't actually cross. They only look like they cross because you see these rays coming at your eye from down here and they look like they came from over here where they cross, but they don't. Plus, again, the easy way, the image is upright. If an image is upright, it's going to be virtual. All right, so what about a diverging lens? So diverging lenses, they're a little bit different and they're a little bit easier in one sense, but they're a little bit more complicated in another, right? So a diverging lens still has a focal point, but it behaves a little bit differently. So diverging lenses are really similar. Parallel rays come in, but instead of focusing them at a focal point, what they do is they diverge away from an antifocal point. So there's an imaginary focal point over here that all these rays are going away from. And you can't see it, but if you put your lens in and you trace the rays, you can figure out where it's coming from. So this would be my antifocal point. So that antifocal point, I'm going to draw on here, right? So I'm going to do my first one right here, and I'm going to put that to show that it's an antifocal point. I'm going to try to draw the second one exactly the same distance away. I'm going to get close. If you're doing these by hand on your own, you want to try to get these things exactly the same distance, because otherwise your drawings get all screwy. Okay, so let's put an object right here. So let's draw these rays for a diverging lens. So ray number one, parallel focal point. So it goes parallel, but instead of going towards the focal point, it's going to go away from the near focal point, right? It's just opposite. So when I'm doing it, if you have a ruler, you want to line up a ruler with your focal point and then diverge it from there, right? So there's ray one. Ray two. I'm going to skip, right? If you want to do ray two, what you could do is you could line up a ruler and aim it at this focal point, but when your ray hits here, make it go straight because it's the opposite of ray one, right? So focal point parallel. I don't want to do that, right? That's I never do that one. In, in reality, I only ever do ray one and ray three, right? But you can do ray two. You can get by on any ray diagram just doing ray one and ray three. So I'm going to skip to ray three, right? Ray three goes straight through the middle, and it's the same here. So here's ray three. So Let's look at where these rays meet. Follow ray one back, follow ray three back, see if you can find where those rays intersect. So if you look right here, ray one comes back and it crosses right there with ray three. So here, this little teeny tiny arrow, that's gonna be your image, right? That's the image created by a diverging lens. So is this image real or is it virtual? You should have said virtual because it's an upright image, right? If it's upright, virtual. If it's flipped, real. You will never get a real image with a diverging lens. But the difference with a converging lens is with a converging lens, you could have either a real image or a virtual image depending on where your object was with relation to the focal point. So doing ray diagrams for lenses is pretty easy. Just takes a little practice, right? If you remember to do ray one, and ray three, right? Those are the only rays that you need to make a ray diagram to predict where the image is going to show up. And the point of the ray diagram is it'll show you if it's real or if it's virtual. And so remember, a real image is always flipped. A virtual image will always be right side up.